Hey there Dissectors, today we are delving into the murky waters of the Cecil Hotel in Los Angeles. In 2013 the Cecil Hotel, now referred to as Stay on Main, was thrown into the spotlight after the mysterious disappearance of Elisa Lam. But this is not the only horror that has unfolded at this establishment and today we are going to explore some of the many tragic events that are tied to this infamous location gaining it a reputation as one of the creepiest places to stay in America. Opening its doors for the first time in 1927, the Cecil offered rooms decorated in Art Deco style and was intended for businessmen travelling through the area. Sadly though, timing was everything and in the case of the Cecil, theirs really sucked. You see, located at 640 South Main Street in downtown LA, it was only a short distance of four miles from the nearby Skid Row. During the Great Depression, that surrounding area became populated with thousands of homeless people, which as you can imagine, isn't the look the hotel wanted to attract customers. With the streets becoming a breeding ground for crime and desperation, and the Great Depression hitting everyone hard, it wasn't long before the Cecil was chosen by many as a place to end their suffering and subsequently their lives. So let's take a deeper look at who checks out early from the Cecil and when possible, the reasons for why. In 1931, a man called W.K. Norton, who was 46 at the time, ended his own life by eating poison capsules. And this was the first of many who'd had enough, with the next person coming a year later. In 1932, a maid was going about her duties when she entered the room of 25-year-old Benjamin Dudich. He was discovered with a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. And in 1934, a former Army Medical Corps sergeant called Lewis D. Borden was overwhelmed and in a bad space. In his room, there were numerous draft suicide notes, as if he was struggling to make sense of his feelings, before finally cutting his own throat. In 1937, a woman named Grace E. Magro jumped from the ninth floor window and on her descent got tangled up in the telephone wires. Then a year later, Roy Thompson, a 35-year-old US Marine, was discovered on a nearby skylight after jumping from his window. And lastly, in 1939, a 39-year-old Navy officer named Erwin C. Neblet ingested poison. During the years around the Great Depression, the figure for deaths of this fashion was more than 150 per 1 million annually in 1937 and 1938, which is tens of thousands of Americans. This is the highest recorded level ever. But not all who met their end at the Cecil did it by their own hand. Others had help. In 1944, 19-year-old Dorothy Jean Purcell, who was staying at the Cecil with her partner, 38-year-old shoe salesman Ben Levine, woke up in terrible pain. Not wanting to wake Levine up, she crept into the bathroom and making sure not to make a sound, gave birth to a baby boy on the floor. Now Purcell claimed she didn't know she was pregnant, and so when the child appeared to not be breathing, she did the unthinkable. She threw the baby out of the window. Its little body was discovered on the roof of an adjacent building. Maybe in her mind she figured that nobody knew she was pregnant, so no one needed to know about the dead baby. The thing is, an autopsy was carried out on the child, and at the time of death there was air in his lungs. He was not dead when she threw him out the window. What do you think? Do you believe she found herself with a baby and panicked? Or could it be that she felt her boyfriend would leave her if she had a child? Well, you can imagine the outrage at the time and Purcell was charged with murder, but found not guilty by reason of insanity. It seems that three independent criminal psychiatrists had spent time with her and it was their conclusion she was mentally confused. Was she mentally confused though? Well, that is described as Problems with short-term memory, difficulty carrying out tasks, poor attention span, unclear speech and difficulty in following a conversation. Which to me doesn't sound like Purcell, a woman who went into the bathroom and gave birth on her own. But this is just thought. Who knows the truth about her state of mind really? In 1947, it is believed that a 22-year-old aspiring actress named Elizabeth Short would often frequent the hotel as she was well known for meeting with producers there and at other bars. On the night she died, it's thought she was at the Cecil having drinks. Now Elizabeth dreamed of being a movie star with many believing she had the right look. Sadly, her dreams were dashed and it's not her movies that people know her for. 
but her death and the nickname, The Black Dahlia. For those of you wondering why Short was nicknamed The Black Dahlia by the press, it's because she would often wear black clothing and at the time of her death, there was a movie out called The Blue Dahlia. In 1962, we have one of the strangest deaths to have occurred at the hotel. A 27-year-old woman named Pauline Otten had been arguing with her estranged husband on the ninth floor of the hotel. After her husband stormed out of the room, Otten wrote a suicide note before leaping from the window. Thing is, 65-year-old George Giannini was walking by in the street below when he was hit by the falling body of Otten. They both died instantly. But when the police arrived at the scene, they thought it was a double suicide due to how things looked. It wasn't until they saw that George still had his hands in his pockets that they figured out the truth. I mean, no matter how much you want to end things, if you're falling nine stories, your hands are not going to be relaxed and in your pockets, are they? Zoe was finally put down as a suicide that had caused an accidental death. Now, the biggest scandal until Elisa Lam occurred in 1964 with an unsolved murder. Pigeon Goldie Osgood was a retired telephone operator who was staying at the Cecil and loved nothing more than feeding the pigeons at nearby Pershing Square. Police were called to the hotel after she was found in her room, beaten, raped and murdered. Her room was ransacked, so maybe they were interested in robbing her initially. Police did find her LA Dodgers cap and a paper bag of birdseed in the room still. A 29-year-old man named Jax B. Ellinger was charged with the murder of Osgood after he was seen walking through Pershing Square in blood-soaked clothing. But after more investigation, it seems that Ellinger was cleared, and to this day, again, no one knows who killed Osgood. In 1976, it got really scary at the Cecil when 26-year-old Jeffrey Thomas Paley, a former mental patient, purchased a rifle, climbed to the roof of the Cecil Hotel and fired off 15 rounds at the street below. Thankfully, no one was injured, but when questioned as to why he did what he did, Paley replied that he wanted to prove just how easy it would be for someone, even with a mental health issue, to purchase a firearm. Point proven, I think. Then in 1988, 28-year-old salesman Robert Sullivan was arrested at the hotel after the body of his partner, 32-year-old nurse Terry Francis Craig, was found in the home they'd shared for seven years. But one of the most known killers to stay at the Cecil is Richard Ramirez, also known as the Night Stalker. From 1984 to 85, he stalked the streets for victims and where better to stay than at a cheap hotel where no one bothers about what you're up to. Plus the area was full of people down on their luck and to Ramirez, a known Satanist. It was like being at a candy store. When Ramirez was sentenced for the crimes, the judge described the killings as cruelty, callousness and viciousness beyond the human understanding. Which is no surprise, as he didn't have a method of kill, more like what tools do I fancy using today? He used handguns, a tire iron, machete, knives, and even hammers on his victims. He was sentenced to death, but died on death row at San Quentin prison, aged 53 years old in 2013. Our most crafty serial killer is Austrian journalist, Jack Unterweger, and he was staying at the hotel in the early 1990s. He killed for the first time in 1974 and after being imprisoned and thought to be successfully re-socialised, he was released. He stayed at the hotel when he was working for an Austrian magazine, writing about crime in LA. Because of his status as reporter, he got access to things like police rides and crime scene areas. No one knew that he was responsible for killing 11 prostitutes in Vienna, Prague and LA by method of strangulation with their own lingerie. When he was finally caught and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole in Austria in 1994, he ended his own life. He killed himself using the same method of knot that he'd used to kill his victims. Now, Elisa Lam was a 21-year-old Canadian student who was studying at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver. She was last seen alive on January 31st and was reported missing by her parents on February 8th after not hearing from her. For three weeks, the young woman was missing until guests at the hotel started to complain that they had low water pressure and that the water tasted funny. After checking the water tank on the rooftop, the naked body of Lam was discovered inside. Her clothes were found nearby. So what strange events unfolded to lead this young woman to lose her life? Well, all of it was really strange. 
The first thing that was found was the CCTV footage taken in an elevator. Lam appears upset, frightened even, as she starts pushing numerous buttons in the elevator, but the doors never close. Did it malfunction? While she waits for the doors to shut, she hides in the corner of the elevator, is seen pressing herself against the wall and even checking the area outside the space. At one point, she even seems to be talking with someone as she is visibly gesturing with her hands, but no one's there. Finally, she exits the elevator and is never seen again. The autopsy showed that there were no visible marks of trauma on her body and toxicology had nothing new to shed either. Eventually, it was ruled an accidental drowning. Okay, but what about the events surrounding her death, her behavior and location of the body? Things don't seem to add up, especially as you need a staff key to get to the roof nowadays and this wasn't found on her. But then neither was her cell phone and it wasn't with her clothing or in her room. So where is the cell phone? Many believe that she was suffering a manic bipolar episode, whereas others think she was being chased by a killer and at the Cecil, <laughs> that's quite possible. The bipolar theory makes sense to a point, as she had limited levels of her medication in her system and her own sister, Sara, noted that she was suffering from paranoia. But again, we come back to how did she get access to the roof? Then, there are the even creepier ideas floating around like a Korean elevator game, where you press numerous buttons in a specific order to reach another dimension. Some people believe this could be what happened due to her pressing the buttons at the beginning of the video. Others have said that they believe her fragile mind was being attacked by the many entities that are said to haunt the Cecil, causing her to see things and react in strange ways. What do you think happened? Let me know in the comments below. American horror story creator Ryan Murphy said he was fascinated with the Cecil Hotel after hearing about Elisa Lam. He became obsessed with finding out all he could surrounding the mystery. This inspired the show's fifth season, aptly named Hotel. In the episode called Devil's Night, they even included the killer Richard Ramirez and seems to be another reason people believe the haunted theory. And ghosts have been seen by many over the years. One young boy in 2014 was playing around with his camera outside the Cecil when he decided to take a picture of the property. He said, when I looked at that window, it just looked kind of creepy to me. And then I showed my friend and he kind of freaked out. It just creeps me out still. The photo shows a transparent figure standing on a ledge outside a window on the fourth floor. To be honest, this seems quite plausible when you think about how many deaths have occurred here by suicide. For a time, the hotel was shut down, especially after COVID caused many setbacks in its reinvention of itself. Hopefully, the past can be put where it should be, behind it, with a chance to emerge reborn with a brighter future and not remain, as one detective quoted in the Netflix's documentary on the hotel, as hell on earth. I hope you found today's episode interesting and I promise it's now safe to stop hiding behind your blanket. The Cecil Hotel certainly is a creepy place and I'm not sure I'd want to stay there. When there is any kind of paranormal energy around, I get serious migraines. So if that is what's happening at the hotel, I'm staying far, far away. Again, let me know what you thought about today's video and please don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on your notifications as we're having issues in that department currently with viewers not being informed of any new material. Anyway, my friends, until next time, stay safe out there.